I'm Brad Owen of Owens Originals. I think kind of like the last of the Mohicans, I may be the last American backdrop painter. Um, I thought maybe before I stopped doing it that we'd give you a little tour of how we paint backdrops, uh, especially the hand-painted canvas backdrops. This is Ted and Larry. They're, uh, they help out in our warehouse and also help uh, hang canvas for us. Uh, they're cutting five by six canvases off the big roll in the back room right now. This canvas that they're cutting is a hundred percent cotton artist canvas. Um, I think we may well be the last company that still uses this stuff. It's a hundred percent cotton material, real canvas. Um, we did for a short time try using PVC canvas, which is an imported Chinese product. Uh, it only cost about a third of what the uh, cotton canvas like this cost, but it, uh, it doesn't paint nearly as well, and I don't think it's as durable. Cotton canvas has to be hung and stretched on the wall before it can be painted, and that's what the guys are doing here. Um, we have sheetrock walls in this paint room. Uh, the canvas gets stapled directly to the wall. It has quite a stretch on it um, when it's wet, so it has to be all stapled down. Fairly labor intensive, but uh, I think that the outcome is well worth the work. Ted's just finishing putting that one up and then Larry should bring him another one around. The walls are large enough on these five by six canvases we can get about three per wall if the walls are empty. Doesn't show up real well in this video but the walls in this little paint room are very coated with uh, paint. You can see outlines of many many canvases that have been painted behind what they're hanging right now. At any rate, that's the way the canvas gets cut and hung. Um, once that's done, then we're ready to uh, paint on it. And that's me there. The uh, first thing that has to be done is you can see the wrinkles in the canvas, the way it's hung right now. Um, since it's a natural cotton product, just like shrinking clothing, uh, if we wet it, that's why we have to staple it to the wall. If we wet it, it's going to stretch. Uh, if you're into art at all, you, you understand that with canvas. Uh, that's what they do with a canvas stretcher. They'll staple a, the canvas on an artist painting to a wood frame. And uh, used to be when I did that, then I'd like to wet the back of it and make it tight as a drum. Okay, what I'm doing here is is uh, just brushing out the water that I sprayed on so that it. Uh, penetrates the canvas evenly and you can almost see the canvas start to shrink and tighten up before your eyes as I do that. Okay, once it's stretched out, somewhat dried, then we're ready for the first base coat. Uh, we apply that with a, a large production spray gun. In this case, we're doing traditional canvases, uh, which you can find in our hand-painted canvas section. And the base coat on this particular canvas is brown. So I'm giving a coat of brown first. You notice I went two directions, horizontally and uh, vertically. Uh, that gives a nice even coverage without too many runs.
as soon as I've got enough of a base coat to satisfy me, then I'll take a brush on the first coat and brush it into the canvas. This helps to spread the paint out and also impregnate the canvas with paint um, so it'll last longer. It also eliminates the possibility of any runs, usually on the second coat. So we'll go over the whole canvas with a brush. Brush in that first coat. Okay, once that's done, then we're ready for the second coat. This is just another coat of brown over the brushed canvas. As you can see, the coverage is a lot better on the second coat. And it's nice and even. Once we've got enough of that uh, second coat on, we'll let it dry just a little bit and then come back into it with a detail gun. In this case, I'm using white in the detail gun. The detail gun is a lot more, it's a smaller paint gun. It's a lot more controllable than the large production gun that we just painted the background color with. And we'll use it to bring up some details in the center area. Most canvas backgrounds have what's called a hot spot. Um, that's where most of the color and action in the background is located. Uh, it's kind of a vignetted effect. And white's a good way uh, to bring up these details against the background. As I said earlier, I think I may be about the last living background painter in the United States. Uh, it's kind of a sad thing. It, when I started, uh, most of my competitors were still painting their own backdrops. Uh, but over time, it seemed that everybody rushed to uh, import cheaper backdrops from China and India and uh, everybody got away from actually producing their own backdrops uh, which I feel like is a sad thing and a sad statement not just for backdrops but for America in general. Uh, it used to be as Americans we could take pride in what we actually made and uh, the country in general doesn't make too much anymore for itself. But enough of that. At any rate, I'm uh, now over spraying just a little bit of uh, brown over the white area. The white, if it was left uh, just as bright as it was, would be too bright in a photograph. So we want to tone that down just a little bit. And we'll come back in and add just a little bit of highlight. Once that's done, then we're ready to change colors in the detail gun, and we'll add some blue. Uh, as soon as 
I get the gun loaded here. Okay, now we have some blue color in the gun. Come back in and just add a few blue highlights in through the white and brown. This old traditional backdrop, I'd hate to think how many of these I've painted since 1978. Uh, seems to be a style that never goes out of fashion. It's fairly simple, but it, it photographs really nicely. Okay, once we've got the blue on, Come back and give it just a little wisp of brown, tone that down just a little bit more. Then we'll change colors in the large gun and do the final color, which is black. Uh, the black will be misted in around the outside of the backdrop to give more of a dramatic vignetted effect. Spray gun works really well for this type of effect. Since the paint's sprayed on the surface, it tends to blend very smoothly. The walls are so dark, you're going to lose track of the outside of the backdrop uh, as I finish this black up, but don't worry, we'll show you a picture of it finished as well as. Uh, one in the studio. Okay, that's about it as far as painting this backdrop. 